Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. This is the 100th episode of the lecture series. 150 is a great milestone and it helps us to set our sights on 200 in the near future. Over the last two and a half years and 150 videos, I have received tremendous support from the community. I especially enjoy the Q&A sections since they provide me with both inspiration and opportunities for more content. I will continue the same release schedule for the foreseeable future. When working on a great project, it's just very hard to stop, so I will keep working on it. In last week's video, I introduced the single movement practice of Xing Yi. In today's video, I will elaborate on the single movement practice of Tai Chi. But first, let's get high on tea. This week's tea is An Ji Bai Cha. An Ji is the name of a city in Zhejiang province, a beautiful place for many famous green teas. It is also one of the four major bamboo growing areas of China. The natural environment in Anji is excellent for growing teas and many other agricultural activities. Bai means white, cha is tea. Put together, Anji Bai Cha means Anji white tea. Bear in mind, Anji Bai Cha is a misnomer. Even though Anji Bai Cha has Bai Cha or white tea in its name, it is, in fact, not white tea at all. Actually, it is a high-end green tea. So, why is this green tea called quote-unquote white tea? Let me explain. In the early springtime, the color of the tea leaf is white due to a lack of chlorophyll, a natural characteristic of this tea species. With time, the tea leaf gradually becomes light green. So, the best season to pick this tea is just when the tea leaf starts becoming light green. Since the green tea processing method is used to process Anji Bai Cha, it belongs to the green tea category. Again, it indicates that the processing method is the most popular categorization method. The history of Anji Bai Cha can be traced back to the Tang Dynasty. Many famous tea books in history have mentioned this tea. For example, Zhao Ji, one of the Song Dynasty emperors about 900 years ago, wrote Da Guan Cha Lun or A Treatise on Tea, a famous book that mentioned this amazing tea. However, this tea all but disappeared in history until the 1930s when tea farmers found some tea bushes in that area with white leaves in the early spring. Given the abysmal quantity of production, Anji Bai Cha was not known until the 1980s. Tea scientists found an ancient tea tree on a high mountain that produced white tea leaves, to which they applied asexual reproduction method, leading to an eventual huge increase in Anji Bai Cha production. Regardless, Anji Bai Cha continues to be one of the China's most expensive green teas. This tea is very delicious due to the highest percentage of l in the tea leaves out of all green teas. The leaves also have chlorophyll in very low quantities, which further improves its flavor. This unique chemical composition is due to environmental factors such as lower temperature, higher moisture level, rich minerals in the soil and uh, like the case for many other teas, a cloudy and misty area. 
Anti Bai Cha is available in typical green tea flavors, often with hints of orchid and chestnuts, among others. Research shows that tea bushes growing next to bamboo forest provide an even better flavor than regular Anji Bai Cha. Anji Bai Cha's tea leaf is very beautiful due to the tea species and its unique processing method. It provides the typical health benefits of a green tea. Since it is a very expensive tea, people drink it mostly to appreciate its flavors. It's indeed very delicious. This is the box of Anji Bai Cha. Take a quick look at its leaves. Anji Bai Cha is the best brewed with water at 80 to 85 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds to a minute. For subsequent brews, you can continue to use water at 80 to 85 degrees Celsius but for a longer brewing time, typically lasting for 2 or 3 brews. You can see the tea decoction is also beautiful. So, Anji Bai Cha is a green tea with white tea in its name. Again, this tea is expensive but worth tasting since it is one of the China's most delicious green teas. Do let me know your experience with it in the comments. With that, let's move on to today's main topic, Tai Chi Single Movement. Topic covered in today's video include first review history and the importance of a single movement practice. Second, types of single movements in Tai Chi. Third, how to practice single movement in Tai Chi. Fourth, principles of a Tai Chi single movement practice. Fifth, misperception. Sixth, demonstration and seventh, takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1. Review History and the Importance of a Single Movement Practice A single movement is the building block of forms and routines in martial art training. Every single movement in the traditional styles has specific martial functions. In last week's video titled Internal Style Concept 63 Xing Yi Single Movements, I briefly introduced the history of this practice. In history, the single movement practice came into being much earlier than forms and routines, especially in the ancient military battlefield. Military soldiers were mainly trained in simple movements using both weapons and bare hands to ensure readiness to fight in all situations. With the further development of martial art practice over time, especially over the last 400 years, routines became longer and longer, indicating the development of Chinese martial art practice in terms of routines. Let's recall the term Chai Shou, which I also mentioned in last week's video. Chai Shou describes a martial art practice process in which a teacher breaks down a form into different simple movements in order to practice their martial functions. With time, with time, Chai Shou became a very important part of any practice intended for combat and self-defense situations. So, teachers use the Chai Shou process to train the students in martial skills and to make them understand the martial applications of each movement, making it a critical step in traditional training. In summary, the result of a Chai Shou is the developed understanding of the applications of every single movement. Having understood the role and the importance of a Chai Shou, it's obvious to see that Chai Shou or understanding the martial meaning of a single movement 
is the only way to master the martial skills for self-defense. In other words, a single movement is the carrier of any martial art routine meant for use in a self-defense situation. Without knowing Chai Shou, any martial art practice will lose the martial and only become an art practice. Topic 2. Types of a single movement in Tai Chi As stated in last week's video, I categorized all the single movements of a Tai Chi practice into three types, the same as the ones used for Xing Yi and Ba Gua. They are first, flexibility and body conditioning training, second, martial power training, and third, martial technique training. I'd like to elaborate on them one by one. First category, flexibility and body conditioning training. There are many single movements traditionally used for body conditioning training. Unfortunately, this part is commonly neglected by many Tai Chi practitioners. Make no mistake, Tai Chi is the physical exercise which requires a practitioner, especially a serious practitioner, to make enough effort in order to maintain a strong body. Some people mistakenly believe that Tai Chi practice only uses quote-unquote Qi or internal energy and does not need muscle development. Some people even claim that some old masters did not have strong muscles, but their Tai Chi skills was wonderful, which is unfortunately not true. I have mentioned many times in many prior videos that internal energy or Qi is not some magical power. Actually, it is an integration of many individual skills such as strength, speed, timing, visualization, breathing, experience, and mental state, which only arise from serious practice. There's no magic but just an integration of those actual individual skills. Any martial art practice no matter internal or external, need a strong muscular structure. Some highly skilled masters in history might not have had strong muscles in their senior years, but they still maintained a healthy physical condition, or else they would not have been able to execute any real martial skills, or those demonstrations would have only worked under specific predetermined conditions, one of them being compliant students. I do not want to call it a martial scam, but no matter how great a martial artist is, basic physical strength is the must-have, or else it would be an illusion. It is worth noting that Chen style Tai Chi, the original style of Tai Chi, a style which still emphasizes the martial application focuses on Chan Si Jin or Silk Reeling Energy practice. I prefer to categorize this exercise as the first part since it helps to develop fundamental Tai Chi energy, which can be considered basic body conditional training ensuring that body movement fits the requirement of uh, developing Tai Chi energy. Of course, since silk reeling energy is the fundamental Tai Chi energy, it is also useful in the other two categories, martial power and uh, martial techniques training. Since both Tai Chi martial power and Tai Chi techniques are based on the silk reeling practice, Mastering silk reeling practice is the prerequisite for the rest categories of movements. Other styles of Tai Chi such as Yang style and Wu style also contain silk reeling practice, either explained in different terms or in much subtler ways of practice. Recall what Chen Xin 
the great Tai Chi scholar said in his Tai Chi book, quote, Tai Chi Quan Chan Fa Ye, translation, Tai Chi is the practice of circulating, end translation. So, any exercises that can improve overall body strength, flexibility, and body conditioning are good candidates for this category. By the way, in the old days, serious Tai Chi practitioners used equipment such as martial art weapons or other devices to strengthen their bodies, which is an effective solution even today. Second category, martial power training. As mentioned in the last section, any Tai Chi practice, no matter what style, applies different types of silk reeling energies. In developing martial power, the silk reeling practice should still be the fundamental movement pattern. In other words, any Tai Chi practices aiming to develop martial power should be guided by the principle of silk reeling, or else it would not be considered Tai Chi at all. In traditional Chen style Tai Chi, besides the Tai Chi 8 energy practices, including Peng, Lui, Ji, An, Cai, Lie, Zhou, Gao, there are many Tai Chi Fa Jin exercises as well, such as pushing, punching, kicking, and so on. Very often, those movements are chosen from Tai Chi routines and used to train Tai Chi power with specific martial intents. In the old days, many styles of Tai Chi had some so-called fast form practice. Actually, those fast form practices are aimed at developing Tai Chi martial power. Single movement practice is a much more effective and efficient way to practice Tai Chi instead of practicing fast form, since Fast form is still a form, which isn't particularly focused on developing specific Tai Chi power for use in specific applications. So, with regard to cultivating martial power, I recommend breaking down the Tai Chi routine into single movements and focus on the single movements for power cultivation instead of practicing fast forms. The result will be very obvious in a short period of practice. Third category, martial technique training. Any martial technique, when not practiced as such, will not have enough impact in developing martial application skills. In other words, skills are based on the practice of martial movements and single movement practice is the most effective and efficient way to develop those martial skills. As mentioned last week, there are many movements in a form and likewise many forms in a routine. So, I recommend focusing on the single movements that represent the key martial intent of a form. That is the key to making substantial progress. So, figure out the main purpose of uh, some movements of a uh, small form, then repeat those single movements with martial intent. With time, you will be able to internalize the martial skills achieved by repeating those single movements. Eventually, those skills will become part of your practice and eventually can be applied subconsciously in self-defense situations. Of course, that is an advanced level of practice, which requires a lot of dedicated practice. By the way, Tai Chi, especially the Chen style Tai Chi, is great for developing martial techniques. Unfortunately, the general lack of practice of a single movements for martial skills in the Tai Chi community has made Tai Chi hard to be used in self-defense situations. To be precise, it's not Tai Chi itself, 
but the average Tai Chi practitioner's lack of a single movement practice that's responsible for its sorry state. Before moving on to the next topic, I'd like to emphasize again that real Tai Chi practice is based on silk reeling energy practice. In other words, no matter what categories of skills you are developing, you should always remember the importance of silk reeling energy, the most important term of Tai Chi. Do check out my prior Tai Chi videos, especially the one titled Internal Style Concept 42, Silk Reeling Energy. Link is in the description. So, how should you actually practice Tai Chi single movements? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 3. How to practice Tai Chi single movement. The first step is to choose the right movements in each of the three categories of movements mentioned in the previous topic. The same principles introduced in Xing Yi single movements are largely applicable to Tai Chi as well. To improve body flexibility, movement should be practiced slowly. Body conditioning practice can be used movements at different speeds depending on the objective. Also, do not forget that Tai Chi circle reeling is a fundamental practice, especially at that stage. Or else, any skills gained through practicing the movements of the other two categories would not be considered Tai Chi practice. Do not forget, the goal is to develop the unique Tai Chi energy, not the energy of other styles. For developing martial power, such as Fa Jin exercises, high speed is necessary for any martial movement. Without speed, force alone won't suffice for martial power in self-defense situations. Sometimes, those movements are very small and subtle, but it does not mean that there is no speed. On the contrary, being able to execute a small movement at a high speed without much preparation indicates a high level of a Tai Chi skill. In other words, strong Tai Chi power without high speed is nothing but an illusion. Tai Chi training equipment such as spears and swords are great for developing Tai Chi power. In a style like Tai Chi, given the many circular movements, developing Tai Chi power is not easy for many people. So, practicing with some martial weapons can help develop Tai Chi power quickly. Again, martial power needs strength, speed, and specific training. For developing Tai Chi martial techniques used in the self-defense situation, so practice without a training partner is less effective since martial art practice needs to be tested and improved through training with the partner. The benefits of punching air are different from those directly involving a training partner. Traditionally, Tai Chi push hand practice is the bridge between formal practice and the martial application. In other words, in order to master Tai Chi's martial application, push hand practice can help you understand the Tai Chi energy, especially in developing energy sensing and control. But Tai Chi push hand practice cannot replace pressure testing and applying specific movements with speed and power. Knowledge of the benefit and the limitations of a Tai Chi push and practice is a key to improve Tai Chi skills. It is worth noting that there are different types of Tai Chi energies in terms of the nature of their power. For example, long force and short force. An experienced practitioner can differentiate between movements used for training long force and short force more effectively. 
So, choosing the right movements for practicing different forces is important too. Do check out my video titled Internal Style Concept 5 Short Force and Long Force. Link is in the description. To summarize, a practitioner has to choose the right movements for developing specific Tai Chi skills. Now, let's take a look at some important principles of a Tai Chi single movement practice in the next topic. Topic 4 Principle of a Tai Chi single movement practice. In last week's video, I introduced a proverb that I created to emphasize some key principles of a Xing Yi single movement practice. Actually, that proverb can also be applied in Tai Chi practice as well. Let's recall the proverb Chen Jin Ba Gu Yao Man Lian, Lian Xi Fa Li Yao Kuai Lian, Gong Fang Ji Shu Yao Jing Run. Translation Slow movement training for flexibility and body conditioning. Fast movement training for muscle power. Clean and precise movement training for muscle technique. End translation. I recommend you watch the principles section of last week's video to get a detailed explanation. Link is in the description. Now, I'd like to add a couple of points to this part. It's especially important to develop the skills through practicing the second and third categories or Tai Chi single movement involved in speed. We all know that practice of any physical movement is first, ensure the body executes a certain pattern of movements without any blockage. Second, develop a specific energy based on the movements. The first one is the prerequisite for the second, and the second one is the objective of the first. Furthermore, the first one requests us to execute a movement by following Tai Chi principles, or else it would not be considered Tai Chi. At the same time, a specific Tai Chi movement should help a practitioner develop Tai Chi energy, which is similar to any martial art style but by nature it is the relaxed, flexible yet powerful martial energy. Some other styles at advanced levels can develop this type of energy too, but Tai Chi is the style most suitable for it. The key takeaway, the objective is to develop unique Tai Chi energy, so that Tai Chi will be useful in a self-defense situation. So to reach the first point, which is ensuring the body executes a certain pattern of movements without any blockage, flexibility is important which can be achieved by practicing the first category of movements. A critical principle here is to follow the slow to fast pattern. A practitioner has to reduce the speed in the beginning in order to help the body memorize the movements or the pattern of the movement. Later, you should gradually increase the speed with force and eventually, make it a powerful practice. So, movements may seem counterproductive toward cultivating martial power in the beginning, but to develop Tai Chi power, speed should only be increased step by step. This is a very important point for Tai Chi martial power training, especially in the beginning of when learning a new movement. Next, to reach the second point, which is developing a specific energy based on the movement. Bear in mind that the objective is the ability to generate the Tai Chi power for use in self-defense situations. So, any Tai Chi power 
without the ability to apply it in self-defense is insufficient in terms of practice. And you may need to check your practice. I will introduce more single movement related Tai Chi principles in the future. In the interest of time, let's move on to the next topic. Topic 5 Misperceptions. Tai Chi, a widely practiced style, has many misperceptions in the community. I'd like to point out and debunk two of many in today's video. Similar to the misperception that I pointed out in Xing Yi, many practitioners mistakenly believe that as long as you practice Tai Chi routines, you will naturally and eventually gain the necessary skills used in self-defense. Actually, this misperception is a lot more severe in Tai Chi than in Xing Yi. Let me ask you, how many people in the Tai Chi community practice single movements toward developing martial skills? Speaking from observation, most people do not practice Tai Chi single movements at all, which is one of the root causes of a practitioner lacking Tai Chi martial skills in self-defense. In today's video, I'd like to point out another misperception that commonly occurs in the community. Some people believe that in Tai Chi practice, one does not have to practice movements specific to developing martial power, but instead one can just directly practice Tai Chi techniques. Another big misperception, let's debunk it. First of all, I have to say that Tai Chi is the unique style compared to other Chinese styles in terms of its approach to practice. It emphasizes a soft power to conquer the hard power, which is one of the popular Taoist concepts. More specifically, it uses circular, flexible, yet powerful movements not only in practice but also in application. The integration of a practice and application indicates the mastery of one's practice. Unfortunately, many practitioners cannot reach this level. For example, they can demonstrate a circular, flexible Tai Chi power, but when applying it, they can only issue a direct and stiff force which violates the principle of internal style practice. After years of observation, practice and teaching, I realized the reason for this issue is that practitioners neglect the second category of a single moon practice and thus cannot execute power release. So, if that describes your situation, make sure to practice the Tai Chi single movements to develop martial power release. So, it is important to practice the single movements of the second category in order to develop the ability to release Tai Chi power, which is the critical but very often neglected Tai Chi skill. Now, let me demonstrate a Tai Chi movement in the next section. Topic 6 Demonstration Today, I'd like to demonstrate the Tai Chi single movement used to practice opening and closing power. It is from the first Chen style Tai Chi routine. Ok, slow motion movement first. So, from the hip, push, bike. Then punch again. One, two, three. Now I put the force and the speed. <laughs> Topic seven: Take aways. First, Chai Shou describes the martial art practice process in which a teacher breaks down a form into different single movements, 
in order to practice their martial functions. Second, similar to Xing Yi, there are three categories of uh, single movement in Tai Chi. They are first, a flexibility and body conditioning training. Second, martial power training. Third, martial technique training. Third, to practice Tai Chi single movement for the three category, you need first, reduced speed for flexibility and variable speeds for body conditioning. Second, high speed for martial power. Third, partner training for martial skill. Fourth, the proverb I created to express the principle for Xing Yi single movement practice is also applicable to Tai Chi single movement practice. Chen Jin Ba Wu Yao Man Lian, Lian Xi Fa Li Yao Kuai Lian, Gong Fang Ji Shu Yao Jing Jun. Translation Slow movement training for flexibility and body conditioning, fast movement training for martial power, clean and precise movement training for martial technique. End translation. Also, a critical principle of a Tai Chi single movement practice is to follow the slow to fast pattern. A practitioner has to reduce the speed in the beginning in order to help the body memorize the movement or the pattern of the movement. Later, you should gradually increase the speed with force and eventually make it a powerful practice. Fifth, two common misperceptions in Tai Chi community are first, as long as you practice Tai Chi routines, you will naturally and eventually gain the necessary skills used in self defense. Second, in Tai Chi practice, one does not have to practice movements specific to developing martial power, but instead, one can just directly practice Tai Chi techniques. Remember, both these claims are misperceptions. You absolutely need the ability to execute Tai Chi power release and thus cannot afford to ignore the practice of Tai Chi single movements belonging to the second category which are intended for developing martial power. Make sure to check out the demonstration section to get the better idea of the Tai Chi single movement practice. That concludes today's video. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.